Hello. Happy Friday night. We got popcorn. Hello. Hi, Raiden. Come on in. Come on in. Have a seat. Have some popcorn. Get comfortable, friends. <laughs> As you can see, we're at Maddie's house. Just like I mentioned. Hello there. Welcome. Hi, Sarah. Yes, good. Good. Hi, Amy. Hi, Randy. Yay. She is. She's over there. Maddie, do you want to say hello? You want to say hello? No? Mabel should come in when she wants. Hi, Maya. Yes. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Hi, friends. Hi, hi, Maddie. Come on. Let's say hello. You want to say hello to the fam? <laughs> You're way down there. Okay. Maddie, no, that's not for you. I gotta put the popcorn over here. Maddie, come. Hello. Hello, everybody. Say hi, Maddie. She hates when I hold her. <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't like that. But she likes when I rub her little head. Right? You like when I rub your little head. Give kisses to the give kisses to your friends, Maddie. They're all here to see you. <laughs> They're not here to see me. <laughs> Hi, Teresa. Welcome. Hi, Virginie. Welcome from the UK. Well, Hi, Danny. How you doing? So, what shall we talk about tonight, friends? Well, I feel there there it wasn't too much of a dramatic week. I think it was kind of chill, if I if I do say so myself. Uh, I do have a peculiar eye look today because I did film with the Metropolis palette again and I wanted to film with it using the Linda Halber crayons as I feel the crayon selection very much aligns with what's in the Metropolis palette so I wanted to get into that and hello Mrs. Unnecessary, good evening. So we filmed with that today. I'm not sure when that's going to be out though so hang on tight. I did, however, I kind of blew my budget already for makeup this month because I went into the Hourglass store and I got the new, <gasps> thank you friend, thanks double A. I got the new Hourglass concealer. Listen, okay. I know I got, I know I have to save my money, but I also know that I review products as well. I get it. So I was like, Alicia, that's, that's the one thing you got to buy this month. And that's it. That's it. You're done. You're not going to get the Pillow Talk palette. You're not, you're not going to get any of that until next month, okay? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm talking to myself, but I'm talking to you. And, um... I got three because I got a corrector shade. Actually, I got two corrector shades. One of them I didn't know was a corrector shade, and then I got one that was my shade. And ha, Jessica asks the veil about the veil setting powder. I love the veil setting powder. We got popcorn. That's what I'm snacking on. I want, actually, Amira, I wanted to do a no buy this month, but I failed miserably. I failed miserably. Roxanne says she got the color apricot. You know, this is what I wanted to discuss because my girl Tanya was saying how if you see the swatches on the arms for the Hourglass Airbrush Concealer, the tones are crazy. The tones are crazy. Hi, Janet. Welcome. And initially, when you see those shades on the screen, you're like, how is that going to look in real life? But when I tried them in store, I was like, whoa, man. Whoa. So I actually filmed with them on Tuesday. Hopefully, I will get that video up. I want to get it up on Sunday, but I got to get my time management right. But I did film with it. I did a demo using all three concealers. And it's interesting how the shades work out. Thanks, Glitchy Glam. How's it going? This is... How's it going? And I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised that the shades, no, despite how they look in the vial, they actually apply very well. I got Topaz, which is the 
apricot corrector shade, or as I like to call it, salmon corrector shade. Uh, Maddie's humping the pillow, but she's out of frame. So I'm gonna give her, I'm gonna leave her in her privacy. I got Sienna, which was like my highlighting type of shade, is also considered a corrector shade. And then I also got Flats, which is my actual shade shade. So, and I got the brush. I know, I'm so stupid. The brush is like the Fenty brush, but it's bigger and a little fluffier. It's synthetic still, but I kind of like it. I like that. So that's what I got for my makeup budget. Kima, I'm happy you caught me live as well. I was surprised that Dune, cause I saw Tara Lynn's video. I think she picked Dune. Oh, LaVon Davis asked if I picked up the new Blendful blending tool from Tati Beauty. I actually forgot that was going live today. I had I, I totally forgot. I did see her video on Blendiful. It reminded me of the Linda Halberg triangular powder puff. And I'm intrigued, friends. I am intrigued. The way she was explaining that thing and the velour texture of it was like, oh, that could be nice. That could be nice. You know what I mean? Hi, Mia. What's up? Oh. Thanks, Audra. I appreciate it. And these are real. These are real glasses. They're not fake. I can't see you without them. And, um, oh, thanks, Carolyn. I appreciate that. If you buy two of the same items, different shades, are you counting all of them or just one will return? Hmm. Which two items, Danielle? I'm sorry, I must have missed your initial comment. Well, because I have not bought, well, so don't, don't mind this. This was, this was actually given to me by my friend. Actually, she's a student who works for Chanel. She's a student who works for Chanel, so she was very kind in gifting this to me. So this is where I have all my little lipsticks, and I just put her right here. I put it behind me so I could be like a Michelle Wong video. <laughs> hey, Katie! What's up? I have not... I usually don't review any Dior complexion products because of the fragrance content, so I just stay far away from that. <laughs> Give us the deets on your boyfriend. Well, he's in Harlem, and I'm here. I know. I was actually going to text you and, and catch up with you. Can we get a daily skincare routine? You can. I would like to film one, especially since I think I have a handle of all the products that I've been using consistently. And um, Audra asks, Sydney Grace, yay or nay to new palette? Well, I was thinking about buying it, but then I was like, do you want to buy Sydney Grace or do you want to save for the uh, Cleona Cosmetics restock? Which I'm like, this is where I'm at, friends. I have is either one or the other. And that's what I'm having trouble with. I probably, uh, the new Cleona shades look marvelous, but it might take up to 20 days to process, which I'm like, and listen, okay, I know that's a first world problem. I know, I know, but I just want the makeup fast. I just want it fast. Those eyeshadows look marvelously beautiful. They do. I mean, transcendent, and I just want them white away. Oh, Danny says the Blendiful is still in stock. If anyone wants to buy it, but you know. Yes, maybe do more shop your stash. I certainly will. Thoughts on Scott Barnes products, Veronica asks. Well, I do have his blush palette that was given to me as a gift, so thank you again for Julie if she's in this chat. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to buy Scott Barnes because I could, but I just choose not to because I spent a lot of money at the end of the year and I'm handling my temptations my urges to just buy it all and i think i will probably over be overwhelmed with all his palettes 
I have not tried his brushes. They looked amazing, but I feel I'm so content with the ones that I have that I'm okay to wait. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> but I do love his blush palette. I did try it a couple of times. I do want to come on here and do a review on it so you guys can see it in action, but that's about it. Hey, Maddie, what's up? Oh, Belgium, go to, you want to go to sleep? I'm sorry I'm keeping you awake. <laughs> Pat does keep me from trying Scott. It's either one or the other. I don't have the budget to support both. I can't support Pat and Natasha. Pat, Natasha, and Scott? <gasps> oh no, that's too much. You're right, Yemi. I do have so much blush. I have to stop with the blush. Too much. Thank you, oh, a friend from Australia. How you doing? I wrote to a friend uh, asking about how she is faring out through this tragic event. I donated through Australian Red Cross. I want definitely want to donate more. It's crazy, friends, what's happening. It is crazy. Iceland is here. Thank you. Lavon says, so cute, Maddie. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. We need to get her in frame. <sighs> oh, yeah, okay. I have the Scott Barnes Eye Fan Brush for the very unskilled. It does wonders. Well, look at that. Perhaps it's worth looking into. Hi, Melissa. Thank you. I actually, I have to respond to you, but thank you for giving me those updates. I really appreciate it. She, she is, you're still stinking adorable, Maddie. So that, so first topic off the list for this chat, I bought the Hourglass concealers. I will be reviewing them, or I, I already filmed myself reviewing them, and hopefully that video will be up. And we can kind of decide if it's something that we want to buy or not. What's good in New York? Hey, Melissa Q. If you haven't checked out Melissa Q's channel, we did a collab together last year. Hi, we got South Korea in the house. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> this is unnecessary here. You want some? Thank you for sending suggestions as to where to donate for Australia, friends. I really appreciate it. Ah, yes. Aria asks if I heard about the new Bite Beauty Foundation. I did glance at that quickly. I didn't realize what type of complexion product it was, but it is a, a foundation. Look at that. Look at that. Sarah, the Bite Beauty Foundation has fragrance. Uh, uh, no, can't do it. Can't do it. It's incredible to me how a lot of these, you know what, maybe we'll segue into it while we're at it, how many of these clean, natural makeup brands put fragrance in their products. And then they use the argument to say, well, it's naturally derived. Fragrance is fragrance, okay? Fragrance is fragrance, whether it's from the lab or it's from your orange peel. And that's just like those, those compounds could cause allergic reaction. And a Tom Ford has, the Tom Ford Foundation has lavender. The newest one that I saw was $150. That's more expensive than the Lemur. I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm not gonna, listen. I'll, I'll get a sample of the Tom Ford, but I ain't buying a bottle. Too much. And listen, listen, it's not about the money. There's some things that I can't invest in when I know, I mean, if it has lavender in it, it's no way, no way. And I love my foundations. I actually started using the Hourglass Vanish Liquid again. That foundation is phenomenal. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care what nobody said. I like that foundation. 
Because when you use very little and you buff it into the skin, it's gorgeous. 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 Mm-hmm. Hi, Maya. Taraji has a new hairline. Get the heck out. I got to look into that. We're talking about the new Tom Ford foundation that's $150. But again, I wanted to say that it's not, it's, I've spent $150 on one item, but on an item that I feel I could just get more from. You know what I mean? And listen, I was, and I might get the Tom Ford face palette, but oh, something else we could talk about. Those new Tom Ford quads aren't so great, eh? They're not so great, eh? I saw Mel Thompson's review. <sighs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Thank you, Becca. Think you're the only one that could wear two different eye looks and not look crazy. Well, I look a little crazy, but you know, an acceptable crazy. I will not, listen, the only quads, oh, here she, Maddie, we could have went outside to go to the bathroom, but it's fine. The only quads that I really loved were the Soleil Nedge quads, and I felt those were so special because of the white compact, and I felt if I would have purchased the newer quads, then I, I don't know, I had enough. I had enough. Is it now? Arya says that fragrance is sometimes used as a preservative, but does it have that role? Like that same molecular role as like an actual preservative? Hi, Siobhan. I do not. I babysit Maddie, but she is not mine. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you, Marie. I appreciate that. Sony G brushes are the best. Oh, there she... <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Natalie, rosemary oil is sometimes used as preservative. I was uh, listening to the Beauty Brains, and they were mentioning some of these natural preservatives are not as effective and they could also cause uh irritation thank you so much evie i appreciate that <laughs> shame on me i need to go to the gym after this i was i would need to do some leg stuff right amira they are they aren't as stable as well the naturally derived preservatives Pammy, hi. Yes, Kima, thank you for bringing that up. I have to update the link for the EV technology sunscreen because Selfridges is out of stock, but 50mil.com does have it. Yes, Yoga with Mo. Dr. Dre says there are a lot of fragrances that can be used as a preservative, but they do run the risk of irritating your skin. Unlike parabens that have been tested and I think was like awarded best a non-allergic preservative on the market. Joan, I'm happy to say it is just a snack. Hi, Pam. When do I have time to eat? Well, <laughs> I, I try to make time to eat and I'm actually not supposed to be eating now. I, I'm supposed to be, I, I sh should have started my fast at 5 p.m., but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Alicia, you mentioned that you've had some crazy client stories. Well, why don't we share one, eh? Crazy client story of the week. Thank you, Forza. I was teaching class last Sunday. It was pretty packed. And I noticed this young lady kind of waltz in. My, might I show you how she walked in, friends? Hold on. Are you ready? 
you know, the booty all out. She was probably not even, not even wearing any underwear. She was wearing beige leggings. You could tell she was trying to show us that she had a booty. Okay, and there we go. We, we saw it. I was like, okay, friend, do what you need to do. We start class and we get into the plank portion, okay? And she just kind of hangs out like this on her forearms like, mm, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, okay, you know what? If you need to rest, rest, friend. I don't want you to hurt your shoulders. So we continue on with the class and I'm teaching a leg sequence that I broke down, I thought, fairly well. Everyone else got it except her. She was just kind of like, she was just kind of like, and I'm like, and I would have helped her if she wouldn't have given me an energy of, I don't want to be here because I've taught long enough. Okay. I taught long enough to, to, to know when someone wants my help versus someone who doesn't want my help. Okay. Exactly. Tiffany, she was not there to work and that's fine. And this is what I learned friends. I'm not for everyone. Okay. I'm not for everyone and that's okay. I don't want you there in the first place. If you're not going to want to do my stuff, then I'm, you know, it's cool that I'm not for you. Talking about an episode when I was teaching class, friends, if you're just joining the chat. So then, I kid you not, friends, we're still in the leg sequence. I forgot what I did. I'm always changing my sequences. Everyone is standing up and doing it, and she's like this on the floor checking her phone she's on her phone on her stomach everyone else is standing up and doing the sequence and she's on her mat she's on her mat on the phone and she eventually leaves and i said thank god get out of here get out of here Initially, it upsets me, okay, when someone leaves my class because it's not because I feel embarrassed. It's because, wow, they didn't really have a great experience and they felt inclined to leave. And I, and I say there, there was something I didn't do to make it clear to them that I, I don't know, right? So... Needless to say, <laughs> she left after the leg sequence, and uh, yeah, I don't think she was going to come back. She was, she was an attention seeker. The minute she walked into the room, the minute she walked into the room, I was done. I was done. <laughs> I'm, you know, compassion is something that I'm looking to practice more so every day. And sometimes when people, people don't leave my class all the time. Before when I started teaching, I did take it to heart because I felt, wow, this sucks. And initially it does, right? Because online, you, you can't tell if someone clicks out of your video, right? Or doesn't finish it till the end. Or maybe you, you leave this chat or whatever. I'm not going to know, okay? But when you see someone physically leave, it's like, wow, there was something I did that they didn't like. Initially, that, that's the, the, the dialogue, right? I've come to learn that sometimes... It's not about me because, again, I've taught long enough to know that I am clear. 
I am clear. My music's not super loud. I'm not super loud on the mic. Everything is very approachable. Everything is broken down. I give you several modifications for you to work with, okay? If you don't wanna be there, that's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Audra, excuse me, I teach at Equinox. I teach a barefoot body conditioning class that's very much inspired by dancers conditioning which will segue into another topic. This is an unpopular opinion. Kate the Great, Kate the Great Beauty, get ready for this one. Oh, unpopular opinion. I don't like bar. I'll tell you why. The bar that has manifested from what Lottie Burke did, I believe she was the pioneer in exhale, right? where you hold on to the bar and you're doing this stuff, okay? okay? Your knees don't like that, okay? Your knees don't like that. And when you're doing repetitive movements like that, yeah, it's gonna burn, but there are things that I shouldn't do just because it burns, okay? I could do other things that are strengthening for my legs that are not gonna put my knees in that compromising position. Yes, Lauren, I am at the West Village, mostly. And listen, <laughs> I have a degree in dance. Not to, not to say that and, and brag, okay? When you're at the bar, you go down and you go up. You don't stay down here. You don't stay down there. You get up, you get up. You're either in a demi plie or you're in a grand plie. But that middle ground that people be pumping in and with the legs and the squeezing and the mm, 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 it's too much. It's too much. You see what I'm saying? My knees are creaking just looking at that. They stay, they stay here. This is so painful. No freaking way, no way. What I like to do, I like to actually do plies, okay? We're gonna do something. We're gonna do something, we're gonna go from here, from here, from here, from here, from here, and we're gonna do it again. From here, from here, from here. We're gonna go to the plie, and we're gonna do double pay. Right, Maddie? Yes, we are. We're gonna work on active flexibility, and we're going to work on strength. So with all that said, all these small repetitive movements, I know they have a role, okay? Especially if you're injured and that's all you can do, that's all that's, all that's available to you. I don't think it's optimal for all bodies that are capable of more. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> if you don't sit down, she's like, what are you doing? Oh, Diana, I gotta, I gotta relax, it's too much. You know what I'm saying? People who went, people who are trained in ballet, when they take bar, it's like, what? What? Teresa, I do not work professionals, but I can. Mm-hmm. So, friends, if you, if you ever just... And Melissa, I agree with you. You could lift heavy weights, but if you have not started, if you haven't lifted a weight in your life, thank you so much, scarf, tan lips. If you haven't lifted a weight in your life, I do believe you have to build foundational strength to support the extra load that you put on your body, okay? People who haven't lifted a weight in their life shouldn't be going to a barbell right away. That's just my opinion. They can eventually, they can eventually, but you have to be strong in that movement pattern first before you put the extra load on your body. And then eventually you, you lift whatever you want. You lift whatever you want. Injured knee, I would seek a professional, medical professional, because I don't know your history. I don't wanna suggest anything to you that would make it worse.
Yes, Mary, and know how to lift. Exactly. Roxanne, thank you, friends. Yes. Thank you, I appreciate that. We're doing it, we're doing it. So that's, swimming is great for the knees, absolutely. I agree, I need to swim more, but my hair hates it. I know, what a silly excuse, but still should just get on the paddle board and da 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 da. Yes, Nikki! Happy Friday, Courtney. I agree, little baby, two, four, two, four, five. And that's why I always say, like, this is an argument. It's not an argument. It's more like a discussion. We're talking about lifting heavy versus body weight training. Thank you, Dorian. Because everyone, is, everyone should lift weight only because it's so good for your preventing osteoporosis. osteoporosis. It definitely improves your bone health. There are so many health benefits to lifting, right? But what I find is people get very, they get motivated, right? And then they're like going into something that their body is not conditioned for yet. And that's why I always suggest, hey, you want to lift the weight? You got to start square one first. You got to start square one. So if you're looking to front squat or back squat, then you should work on your body weight squat. If you're looking to deadlift, then you should work on your hinge. So different things I feel can be built on and practice before you get into the lifting. Spin is great, but I feel like it could definitely screw up your posture if you're not wary of it when you're off the bike. Sasha, we got the Metropolis palette. We got the greens on this side and like the browns on this side. Oh no. I started lifting, I started weightlifting too aggressively and almost had Radbo. Oh. No, no, no. Danny's a good one. <laughs> she <laughs> She loves to hide in the pillows. Spin can hurt the knees, especially if the seat's too low. You have to... Rhabdo is a condition. I believe it's, it's something about... Is it something about fatiguing or overworking? Let us know. Hello. Oh, no. How is that going? Rheumatoid arthritis. Man. Do I live on a diet? Diet, I, I don't live on a trendy diet, but I do make sure that my portions are reasonable and then I drink lots of water. Really? Metropolis for $75 in France? Get out. My foundation today is the Hourglass Vanish Liquid in Honey. What would I recommend to someone who's overweight? I would recommend, I definitely would recommend a specialist because is that needs to be tackled from nutrition to fitness to, from, to wellness. So there's a lot of sectors involved and um, everyone is different, but for all bodies in this conversation, just move when you can. It doesn't have to be a class. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to run a thousand miles. You don't have to do knee tucks. Take a walk more often than you would. And you'll start to see when you condition yourself to do more activity like that, then you crave it. And then it, you feel the benefit in that. It makes you feel less fatigued. It makes you feel more energetic. And that's when you're, you have more motivation within yourself to add on more, to add more to your agenda. Yes, I do wish Hourglass would extend their, their medium tan shades, but maybe they will because they did add some shades to their stick eventually. Teresa, I have not tried the Surat Foundation, but I would like to. What do I think about the Jillian Lizzlebeath? Well, 
I didn't know there was any Julia Michaels Lizzo beef until I saw Alan Roberts video today about it. It's a very sensitive subject. The, the body positivity group is, there's a lot going on in there and sometimes I, I tread lightly all the time because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but it is fact over feelings and you know, Lizzo could be the anomaly. She could be the anomaly in that she could be the weight and the size that she is and have great long life, great longevity. But based on statistics that we've seen, that's not the case. Me too, I love that angry bald man. Jillian, the thing with Jillian is that she was she was on Biggest Loser, which is like so not how overweight, obese people should be losing weight or should be approaching their wellness at all. At all. It's it's just not a good it's not a good angle, it's not a good perspective. And for her to say stuff like that and to for her to be on the show and do and do the things that she does, I don't think she's not in her place. I don't think she that's her place to say those things. I agree, Nikki. I agree. I think just hear me out. <sighs> there is the body positive, there's the body positive positivity movement, and then there's a the fat acceptance movement. Okay. The fat acceptance movement definitely took over the body positivity movement. Body positivity to me was embracing parts of you that you cannot change. Okay, I don't mean to be out there in TMI. I don't have big boobs, okay? I don't have big boobs and we're constantly still surrounded by ads to get a breast, get breast implants and blah, 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 blah. And bigger boobs are better. I'm not doing it. <laughs> yes, they're watching. Now they're gonna unsubscribe. So, and here's the thing too, friends. When you say healthy at every size, but then you're quick to say skinny models shouldn't be on magazine covers anymore, then it's not healthy at every size. You just refuted your own stance. I, I, don't, under, I don't understand. Right, I'm going to get reported now by the fat acceptance movement. Eh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I think this was the only time so far on my channel that I've been this controversial. But, you know, that's why I don't like to talk about it because I'm not, I'm not of a certain size and here I am, little me, talking about body positivity and what they should be doing and blah, 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 blah. This is just what I see. This is just what I see and I'm never one to deny this is, and this is what they would call fat shaming. I have a lot of people in my class that are not a size zero, two, four, six, or eight. And I help them. I adjust them. I'm not afraid to go up to them and correct them. I can still see what's happening, okay? If I was fat phobic or if I was fat shaming, that wouldn't happen. So, mm. The only thing I liked about gaining weight is that I got a cleavage. <laughs> but this is why I don't like to speak so much about it because it is it's very it's very touchy. So we're going to we're going to switcheroo. Someone asked me about it. That's what I, that's my stance on it. In terms of Lizzo and Jillian Michaels, I think Jillian should not be, she should not be in that conversation. Thank you, Lauren, I appreciate that. So we're gonna drop it. We're gonna drop body positivity because I think it's still very too much of a sensitive topic to discuss. We're moving on, we're moving on. I already, we already spoke about concealer. We already spoke about crazy people in my class. <laughs> And 
How else can we round this out? We got 20 minutes left. We got 20 minutes left. Oh, let's talk about my latest video, my skincare video. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about our my skincare video or Henry Cavill. He finally posted on his Instagram today. Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Yes, Marlene. I did talk about the Hourglass Concealer earlier in this chat. Earlier in this chat. I'm really happy that a God, I didn't see all, all the comments come so backed up, but I think overall it got a positive response because skincare is another topic that people get very heated about concerning lots of ingredients that have been demonized in the industry. And I think this is what it is, friends. This is, I feel this is what's happening, right? In the food industry, there are a lot of fast food foods that are engineered in a lab to be addicting, okay? They are engineered to be addicting, engineered for the perfect amount of savory and sweet and everything else so you can just eat it over and over again and don't get tired of it. I feel what's happening in the food industry, people are equating to what's happening in the skincare industry and it's just not the same. It's not the same. And I don't wanna get this back to a previous conversation, but that's, that's basically why I feel people are really untrustworthy about ingredients made in a lab because when they think about the food that's made in the lab, they think it's all bad and it's not. The skincare industry is not the same as the food industry, right? So when people hear about these ingredients being made in a lab, they think it's dangerous. They think the government is out to get us just like they are out to get us, pumping all this medication in us, giving us all these foods that are making us this and this and that and killing us. The ingredients that, that are made for skincare in a lab are made to protect us. So I know that it sometimes seems that the government is bad and it's, they're out to get us. I get it. When it comes to the FDA, thanks Gretchen. When it comes to the FDA ensuring that the ingredients in our cosmetics are safe, they are safe. They are. When it comes, but people, people don't feel very strongly about mineral oil, dimethicone, silicones in general, parabens. They truly feel that they have a negative impact on us. And, you know, I hate to break it to those people, but a lot of these botanical extracts and naturally derived ingredients have to go through a lab so they are able to be formulated in a product. You can't just crush the flour and put it in your cream. You might get a really gnarly rash. And, and, that's, and that's the truth. I love mineral oil too. Mineral oil ain't gonna do nothing. I'm like, thanks, Allie. Ain't gonna do nothing like uh, an oil from a plant that is not shelf stable. It could go rancid quickly, could oxidize quickly. And depending on where it has been extracted, soil wise, regional wise, you don't have control of those compounds and when they're applied to your face. So a rosehip seed oil from one place could be fine for you, but if from another place, despite it still being rosehip seed oil, it could really screw you up. And, that's, and that is the reality of the game, okay? <sighs> you know what I mean? And, and I understand that essential oils have a place. They have a place in skincare because people love scents, right? Something primal in us that when we smell something, what, when I smell something, I get nostalgic and I get happy, I get sad. It has a really uh, impactful effect on us, right? But generally though, it's not the best route to take when it's put in a topical product because it could be irritating to your skin. It, it doesn't have to be irritating now, but it could over time. And unfortunately, we can't predict when that could happen. Yes, made it in time, come on in. Exactly, and listen, I'm all for people making their own products. You know what? 
be creative. If you have an urge to create and to share your craft, right? If you want to share something that you made and you feel is amazing, who am I? But the problem with these smaller brands like in Etsy and wherever these smaller brands are being sold from, they don't have the budget for the safety testing. And that's the difference between the bigger brands and the small mom and pop brands and where you run the risk of maybe having an allergic reaction or contact dermatitis from these smaller brands because they can't guarantee that the ingredients that they're using, the environments that they're in making these products are safe for everyone, unfortunately. So as much as I would like to buy a cream made in someone's kitchen, I, I wouldn't buy it because I'm like, I don't, I don't trust it. Hmm. Yes, it can, Lisa. It can help. I do, I, you know, I wish companies will just be upfront about the anti-aging thing and say, hey, the skin that you have now, <laughs> right, sounds like Jaclyn Hill, exactly. The skin that you have now is what you have now. You cannot turn back time. So what you can do is just improve the skin that you have now. Yeah, Janelle, I agree. The essential oil has like a cult following. And if you say anything against essential oils, watch out. They're going to sprinkle that on you like some holy water, like your Dracula, okay? Exactly. Prevention is key. Prevention is key. And unfortunately, people don't realize that until it's too late. And that's why they resort to surgery. And that's fine. That is not a judgment observation. If they really want, good night, Teresa, have a great evening. If they don't want their face, their skin to look a certain way, their topical products are just not going to do what you want, depending on what you want. Tretinoin and sunscreen, that's my, that's my formula. Yeah, essential oils in a diffuser. All for that. There's some that are not too sensitizing or or i'm not too reactionary to them and i like an essential oil diffusing but i don't want to get crazy lauren asks what sunscreen do i love well like i mentioned before i do have to update the ev sunscreen technology that you can find in my latest best of skincare 2019 video and i have a couple of others there but the beat shield nivea water gel also the senska I got, I really love too. <laughs> what essential oils do you put on your face? I don't know, I can't. You're welcome, Lauren, anytime. I know. Uh, 50milliliters.com has some. I'm going to post it on my video now. Well, I think a lot of companies will now disclose what the fragrance is in a lot of these products because usually fragrance is a certain amount or certain ingredients that is exclusive to that brand, but now they're working on disclosing that. So, good night, Diane. Have a good one. I have tried Kaleidoscope eyeshadows. I think I am... Put them like in a favorites video, maybe back in the summertime. Yes, you got it. You got to start sunscreen young and bakchul is not a tretinoin alternative, just like rosehip seed oil is not. <laughs> There's not enough evidence, sound evidence for it to completely replace the role of tretinoin. Absolutely not. I'm sure it, I'm sure Bactrul does something. It does, but it's not it's not at the uh, rate or the performance of tretinoin. I have Rose. I have tried the Purito Unscented. Um, I think Dr. Dre reviewed it. She mentioned that there were only two filters in there. I thought I saw more than two, but I could double check. I did not buy the new Pillow Talk palette yet. I didn't buy it yet. I did see Mel's video. It looks gorgeous, but I'm, 
I'm holding off for now. I'm not going, I'm not going crazy. And that's the thing too. When, when cosmetic companies make medical claims, don't, don't believe it. Don't believe it. I did hear about the black girl sunscreen. They use avobenzone and a lot of other filters that are okay. I think because it has coconut oil in it. I'm not too crazy about coconut oil on my skin. It, it leaves me a little greasy. So that's why I didn't run for it. And, and also the filters in any sunscreen made in the States, they're just not superior like the ones in Asia and Europe. I have tried the La Mer Foundation a long time ago. So funny thing. <laughs> we'll wrap it up soon. We got 10 minutes left. I got in an argument <laughs> with somebody about the La Mer Foundation because Pat's foundation has alcohol in it. And she was saying how La Mer is expensive because of all the botanicals are that are in the foundation. And I'm like, maybe without the alcohol, the ingredients found in La Mer are similar almost identical to the ones found in Pat's foundation. I mean, they both have cyclopentasiloxane and isodotacane, I think. They got a lot of silicones in there, but the La Mer has like a thousand botanicals in it. And I'm like, they're at the bottom of the list. Like, what is that really gonna do for you? So, whatever. That's, that, that's, she was, she, she unsubscribed. Hi, Lisa. Thank you so much. You're so generous, so kind. I appreciate that. Don't worry about it, Shell. We'll have another one on Friday night next week. So that was that. But in closing, in closing, I love me some retro eyeglasses. Oh, and thank you so much, girl. Doing anything fun tonight? I might do some handstands. I have to at least do like 30 minutes. 30 minutes. I'm sorry, Melissa. I'm gonna put it on my main feed so you can see it. I haven't tried Bare Minerals Foundation in a very long time. I could grab a sample to see what's up. Thank you so much for that. Yes. Thumbs up. Good night, Laura. Say good night to the pups for me too, eh? Right, Caitlin. Like the first five re really will determine a product's efficacy. Toya. Get at... Th Friends, thank you so much. You're so generous. I love it so much. That's... <laughs> Look at Maddie's little head. Look at Maddie's little head. She's so cute. She's so cute. The Biore watery sunscreen is nice, but it's a little too fragrant for me. It's a little too fragrant for me. I have it, I really love the texture, but I, I smell it on me. And this is why I feel, thanks JC, thank you so much. This is why I feel it's not so much the sole, thanks Ali, you're so kind. It's not the sole presence of an ingredient, it's how it's formulated, okay? There is, I think it's the La Roche-Posay Shaka Fluid, the Shaka Fluid, it has alcohol in there. Just like the Nivea does, I believe, or, or another Japanese sunscreen that I have. I smell the alcohol on my face long after I apply the Shaka Fluid, whereas on the Japanese sunscreen, I don't. I don't, it's, and that's why I'm like, it, like my friend Valerie was saying, just because there's jalapeno in whatever, thank you friends, I so appreciate your generosity. Just because there's jalapeno in it doesn't mean it's gonna be that spicy, it depends how you, you cook with it. I can't stand that smell either, it, it sits on me. Thank you so much, Welsh Witch. The Shaka Fluid comes in tinted and non-tinted, I believe. 
Yes, I have tried the can make. I have. Toya, you better stop. Hi, Skylar. Skylar, give her a hug for me, yeah? <laughs> the can make is so good. I was actually surprised. It was so funny because it's so small and it says use for face and body. I'm like, do I use the whole thing on my body? Because I think that's how much is in here. I, Gigi, I agree with you. I think generally the La Roche-Posay skincare products are better than their sunscreens and they have such a reputable rep for it. Tanya! Thanks, friends. Thank you so much. They have such a reputable, they're so reputable for their sunscreens, but they're not that great. <laughs> Good night, Alicia. Lit on the street, you right. You right. But I could save it as well. I agree, Coco Violet. The, the La Roche Passets can be a little greasy, greasy. That's why I like my um, Japanese sunscreens better, for sure. For sure, Z's. And, and I will continue to use them. I have maybe like five that I'm rotating through. I also love the Australian sunscreens. They do have fragrance, but it's not too, too, too bad. I'm sure you can get better sunscreen in Mexico. Bye, Abba. <laughs> I know, so dramatic. <laughs> so dramatic. Yes, the makeup tutor, come on in. We're only going to be here for like five more minutes, but chill, chill as much as you like. I think uh, I'm going to try the Pond's makeup remover again. Tatcha and Drunk Elephant. Well, why don't we round up the chat with Tatcha and Drunk Elephant? Tatcha is beautiful. I, I do think we're paying more for the packaging and marketing than anything else. That's not to discredit the ingredients in their products, but unfortunately because of the inclusion of fragrance, I think it's not worth it. Any good thing they have in those products for me just gets, is, is invalidated with the with fragrance. And with Drunk Elephant, um, I, I believe in the same thing. I believe they take on, thank you, Lisa. I believe they take on a suspicious six. They use a lot of fear mongering with their, with their marketing and it's, Listen, I used to use their glycolic acid serum for like a very long time and I just found formulas that are better that don't have so many of those botanical extracts in their ingredient list. I mean, there's so much in there for what? You know what I mean? So that's why I just stopped buying it and especially because a lot with the the customer service being so shady and weird to Caroline and to, to anyone that would question the efficacy of their products, don't you dare. Thank you, Scarf. Thank you, Scarf Tea Lipstick. Tata Harper, Keisha, do not, I don't care what anyone says. Tata Harper, mm -mm. I don't care, listen, it's great that she grows her own whatever that she puts in her products. It's not worth it. Again, botanical, naturally derived extracts are not necessarily better. They're not necessarily better. They do not ensure efficacy and performance. They're not tested the same way that the other ingredients are, like the, the, the OGs, okay? Like the mineral oils and the silicones. Hey, Makeup Vixen. Welshwich, Welshwich, I agree. Tata has too much, too much fragrance. Sylvie, exactly. There's no long-term research on on these products but people really believe they really feel they're having an experience with these expensive botanical good night lena botanical products that are going to change their life but i'm just like no i was that person i bought tasha i bought drunk elephant i even wanted to buy a tata harper serum but i'm like no don't do it Exactly, and that's what Drunk Elephant was doing. They were getting defensive about their product not working on customers. Dermalogica is not great either. They have so much fragrance in their products. I wouldn't touch Dermalogica either. Dermalogica, Kiehl's, Ule Hemrickson. Mm -mm. 
That's a great question. I don't know what can replace Biosans. Biosans still uses fear mongering as well, but at least they're fragrance free. Tiffany, I do not use a vitamin C because I haven't found one that I feel actually is stable enough to provide antioxidant protection. <laughs> Hello, friends, March. I like the ordinary products too. Amore Pacific, oh my gosh. I love their ingredients, but they are so perfumey. No freaking way. I don't know if I could do a video on the ordinary because I don't have enough ordinary products, but maybe. Pam, yes, Drunk Elephant was bought by Shiseido. They ensured that the everything's the same, but you never know what's happening behind those closed doors. I love good molecules as well. Natalie, the powdered vitamin C could work because it's probably more shelf stable, but I'd rather just wear sunscreen. I, yeah, agree with Amore Pacific, too fragranced for me. Skincare is, is expensive because they're taking advantage of the fact that people are staying away from these evil ingredients and it's more expensive because the quality of the ingredients are, are harvested here, there, and they're a higher premium grade. No, they're not. No, they're not. Here's the thing, and this is going to wrap it up, okay? I'm gonna take off my glasses for this. Ingredients like glycolic acids, BHA, salicylic acid, glycerin, tretinoin, all the retinoic acids, vitamin Cs, those have not changed for a long time, okay? What, brand, what do brands need to do in order to convince you that, your, that their product that has the same AHA as the other product is better? It's because they have to demonize the other products. Well, we don't have parabens in our serum. We don't have this in our serum. So that's why ours is better. But it's the same active. Oh, that's what they're doing to you. I'm not falling for it anymore. I used to. I used, I used to be that person that would say, no to silicones, no to parabens. They're evil. They give you cancer. And I don't like to say that because people who actually are suffering from cancer or who have lost a loved one from cancer might feel like because they use a soap with parabens in it, that's the reason why they're ill. And it's terrible. It's terrible to always use the cancer excuse to demonize ingredients. That should just stop and should just exit its way out of the dialogue, okay? I don't care. All these ingredients are the same. They, the raw material, the places that they're getting from, it's not so much the ingredient, it's the packaging and the marketing. A lot of the skincare stuff, that's expensive. And I, listen, I understand because I buy Pat, a lot of her packaging's really expensive, but I feel the eyeshadows perform well because I have used them extensively, right? But when it comes to skincare, thank you, Allie. Thank you so much. When it comes to skincare, I'm not falling it for anymore. I don't care if, if your serum comes from a majestic volcano created by a fairy, elf, queen, you can keep it. You can keep it. I don't want it. I don't want it. If you're gonna charge me my soul firstborn and they're tenfold, I don't want it. And that, my friends, will end this chat. <laughs> that, my friends, will end this chat. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for, thank you for dealing with my antics, my dramatics, my over-the-top personality. And that is a wrap. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. I will see you soon. I'm going to try to finish my best makeup palace in 2019 tonight. Maybe I'll get it up tomorrow, at least tomorrow night. And I will try to get the Hourglass Concealer review up soon. And until then, friends, I will see you soon. <laughs>